Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Future Hour. And today we're so 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 excited to have Asad to be on the podcast because this is marking such an important time for the whole industry and also for us as well because this is the first episode of Women in Blockchain. So thank you so much for taking your time and being here. Hi, hope you're all doing、um, perfect, and I'm so glad to be here. Thank you, thanks for having me. Absolutely, thank you for your time. So, jumping right into it, how would your parents describe what you do for a living? Actually, that's a, a funny story to tell.、Um, actually, what I do is、uh, fundamental analysis and on-chain data analysis of blockchain projects, and I think that's too much for my parents to. <laughs> and,、uh, Tell others to describe what I do. They usually say that I'm active in、um, cryptocurrency market and just that.、Uh, but、um, to just、um, simplify that,、uh, I uh, work with、um, companies of cryptocurrency projects, crypto related projects, and blockchain based projects for. Um, which give different services, not only trading in the market, but also providing some services such as wallets, such as、um, DeFi、um, smart contracts, and、uh, I、um, work as a researcher in this market、uh, to help them improve their、uh, products. And also, I'm an analyst in the、uh, cryptocurrency market. That's definitely fantastic. So how? Would you describe someone as pretty new in the industry, maybe only for a few months or so? What does blockchain researcher and analyst mean to them? Let me start about the nature of financial markets. When you're active in a financial market, you're trading something, and the most simple thing you have to do is to predict the market to understand、uh, what would. Be the next move of the market. So、um, there's something called technical analysis using char- charts and candles, and it it's been always used in different、uh, financial markets. But、um, on the top of that,、uh, we have something called、uh, fundamental analysis.、Um, in the past,、uh, financial markets such as,、um, for example, stocks. Uh, we had some companies. We were、um, buying and selling the shares of a company. We could evaluate. We could see the company. We could、um, see what does it have what, and what earnings it, the company has. And also, for example, for commodity、um, commodities, for example, we could understand that this news、uh, can cause a hype in the, for example, price of oil. But now we have the market of crypto. Uh, there's nothing physical you can see to understand and evaluate a project. Project and、um, everything is digital, and、um, you should have a met- some metrics for yourself to understand which projects are good for investment and、um, which are not. And there are lots of different metrics you have to check. Uh, we have、uh, fundamental analysis. It means that you have to understand the project. You have to read the white paper. You have to read the project, the idea, the core idea of it. Understand it for yourself, and then check, for example, the team. Check the investors, and、um, after that, you're talking about the crypto project. So it's、uh, actually based on、uh, blockchain. And、um, when you're talking about blockchain, the,、uh, one of the most important features of blockchain is that it's all transparent. You can see all the addresses, all the transfers. It's totally decentralized. You are totally、uh, anonymous and、uh, private in a blockchain. But、uh, every, all of the addresses,、uh, I mean, all of the,、uh, I can say, wallets that are holding currencies. Are actually transparent on blockchain. So、uh, when you want to evaluate a crypto project, you have to understand what's going on on its network. For example, are people that are holding、uh, this currency from a long time ago now starting to sell it off? If they're selling, 
if they're moving their uh, currencies, for example, to the addresses of exchanges, you can, for example, understand that you might have a sell pressure, you might see um, a reduction in the price, and it's just a simple example to understand by on-chain data. It means all the, the transfers and all the information on a blockchain that can help you understand how this project is working and how it's being used. So um, you have to understand it. You have to learn about the nature of it. And uh, then you can evaluate that um, is a currency undervalued? Does it deserve to grow up? Does it deserve to have a um, much more price or not? Sometimes you see that the project is just, for example, shit coin. And we call that um, because it's all a scam. And um, you you see that it's just uh, overvalued. Uh, there's nothing going on on its blockchain. So you can understand actually the value of different projects. Uh, what you just said is absolutely incredible. And I think it's so, so important for people who are new into the industry, be able to identify what are the few criteria for a scam project for a shitcoin and also for them to little by little learn more about fundamental analysis right so with that said from your experience what are the three or few most criteria for you when you are identifying a scam project it's really uh, related to your experience. The more you explore in different projects, the more you can understand how does a good project look like? Um, what is uh, the points that have to be mentioned in, a, in the documentations, in the white paper uh, for you to trust it? And uh, if I can say just mm, uh, three of the things I really see in these scam projects, one of them, the most important one, is that they have some, um, actually I can say, um, or and they either have no idea behind them, or they have some ideas that are just imaginations. They can't come true. And um, they usually uh, promise you to give you some kind of, for example, annual profit, fixed profits. Uh, and they also usually want you to have some, um, referrals to invite your friends and uh, they usually use some um, the Ponzi um, business models and uh, they want you to add your friends and get some uh, more money and these kind of projects usually uh, blow as scams and <laughs> you can easily understand that it can be done they can't just pay people with fixed profits and um, that's not what's going on in um, real financial markets. They have both ups and downs. You could, and you have to actually admit that a financial market has both ups and downs. There is no guarantee, no um, fixed profit in this market. You have to be all smart and um, study, and you have to research and then invest. Not only um trust the promises of a fake project brilliant and just to follow up on that something if it is too good to be true then it's probably a scam if these people are getting out of their way to selling and to um talking about return of investment all day long versus talking about the problem they are solving, the value they're actually bringing to the community. So I think those are something to follow up with what you're saying uh, are quite important for the audiences out there to consider. So just to follow up, cute question to ask, what was the first white paper you read? The first white paper uh, I read was definitely Bitcoin. And I really um, just suggest others, recommend everyone who enters this market, who wants to get familiar with um, cryptocurrencies and blockchain. I always tell them to read Bitcoin's white paper uh, in the first place. Uh, you might uh, actually not understand all of the technical details if you are entering um, in this space. Um, and um, it's kind of, it might be kind of hard for you to understand all of the technical details, but uh, it gives you a good, good insight about the whole idea of 
uh, this technology. Uh, I don't think man, that blockchain and crypto is only about financial markets. It's not only about trading. It's a revolution and um, it um, helps to omit centralized powers. It's here to give you more freedom. It helps you to uh, be your own bank and uh, do all of the um, things you always done um, in centralized uh, organizations now freely without any limits and uh, it's um there is a really strong idea behind bitcoin so i think that the white paper everyone should read before entering this space totally agree i think bitcoin really is where everything all started so asad and would you tell us the reason why there are more and more iranians are joining the crypto and blockchain space and maybe some quick comments when it comes to the culture background over there yeah, sure. Uh, actually, the reason why Iranians tend to um, join cryptocurrencies and blockchain space is um, the first reason was mining, uh, I guess, because um, there, uh, first of all, uh, electricity and power is kind of um, has a um, cheaper price in Iran. Actually, it was a real good um, environment for mining. So um, the starting po point, I guess, was uh, mining and lots of people started mining in, and um, having some uh, big mining farms. And after that, um, I think um, for not for only for Iran, um, about all of the countries, economic problems and um, you know the decrease in the value of uh, different fiat currencies uh, make people like to join a, an economical um, system, a financial system. I mean. That doesn't um, that isn't controlled by some central governments, central controls, and um, is free. Uh, you know, um, the main point of Bitcoin was the freedom for the people. So uh, lots of people tend to uh, use Bitcoin and invest in Bitcoin um, to um, actually avoid from the uh, economic problems and the things that happen for the fiat currency. And after that, um, lots of people actually um, in Iran like to um, um, be part of financial markets. And also uh, IT space uh, is so interesting for people. There are lots of, for example, computer engineers in Iran. Uh, as I have read before, um, the um, interest and the studies in such fields is so uh, popular in Iran. So um, I think that would be a reason too. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it's a good investment for people in Iran uh, based on uh, also, for example, there are lots of sanctions that don't let people to um, use uh, some international payment systems in Iran, like PayPal or uh, MasterCard. These card kind of services are uh, not uh, allowed in Iran, but with cryptocurrencies, people um, could easily do some international transfers and transactions. So that would be a really uh, big freedom for Iranians. And uh, I think that would that was really important. And uh, you actually mentioned uh, culture and um, the cultural background. Um, uh, about culture, I think that um, doing uh, some financial activities is um, something that Iranians love to do. And um, in this time that you know, Iran is ha has lots of sanctions and some of the industries can't perform uh, as well as before um cryptocurrency mining and also for example exchanges businesses around cryptocurrency and blockchain were a really good opportunity for iranians to uh, join and make money actually um, but about uh, the other part actually our um our podcast name is women in blockchain uh, about this uh, I have to say that um, it's not so easy to be a girl in Iran and be active in financial markets. Um, I have been so lucky that uh, lots of my um, colleagues, my um, people that I worked with were so supportive and um, they really helped me uh, and they never, um, um, you know, reacted like I'm a girl, so I don't, uh, I shouldn't enter financial markets. I can't do that. But it's it's an old culture, an old um, thought. I think it's not only for Iran. Lots of uh, countries have such kind of uh, culture that uh, women 
can't enter kind of financial markets and for example they have to stay at home or do some artistic jobs and uh, some soft jobs that have no stress and uh, with um I know you know some kind of girlish stuff but um it's um it is a, an old culture in Iran too but nowadays uh, women are really uh, improving and entering this space I have lots of friends here that are entering uh, blockchain space so uh, it's kind of it had some kind of difficulties about the culture to be a girl and also uh, be known as a uh, professional in a financial market but it's now really better it's improving and the culture is um, being much more supportive love with that would you mind share with us what was something that you had to overcome um, mm-hmm. That's one part that also you mentioned that many people have been very supportive to you as well. Would you mind share an um, example of that as well? Yeah, sure. I entered uh, blockchain and crypto space in 2018. I wasn't active in social on social media my Biden, and I was just uh, doing some, um, for example, content providing and analysis for different websites and exchanges. And uh, I wasn't so active in the community. But um, about one or two years ago, I started to join the community and be more active on on Twitter and social media channels. Uh, First of all, uh, lots of people knew me from my background. So uh, started following me or um, having me in different meetings. The first thing I heard was that you're a girl and they follow you because you're a girl. They follow you to see your picture. And it's not um, about what you know, and it's just uh, because you're a girl. And that was so, you know, that hurts <laughs> to um, know lots of things. And people just blame you that they follow you because you're a girl. And um, also, sometimes I, it happens. For, it happened for me that um, some of the companies said that uh, we want, um, we don't like to. Um, work with Asad because if we work with her, they think that we are working uh, with her because she, she's a girl. <laughs> and um, that was kind of hard for me at the first place. But then I understood that it's just a really, really little part of the um, society. And lots of people are really supportive. For example, I um, have a boss. I um, actually work with a company. And um, my boss, uh, it's about a year that um knows me and uh, really supports me and um, once he told me that uh, there's nothing that limits you it's only you and your thoughts and your mind that's limiting yourself you can do whatever you like you can improve as much as you like and uh, don't think that something will be a roof to your improvement you can't go further than a line or um, you don't have a border you don't have a limit Uh, you can improve and that was really supporting that was um, that really changed my mind about um um, I thought that I uh, will improve to, a, um, for example, to a good uh, level and can't be able to improve more or uh, inter kind of international and global communities. But then I understood that, no, he was right. I was uh, limiting myself with the thoughts I had. And also now I have a podcast, actually. I'm working with uh, some other colleagues and, and he always told me that too. Uh, for example, sometimes I wanted to share something. I was afraid that uh, it will be so, uh, it will have some, um, actually, uh, if I tell something, uh, people will um, won't like what I'm saying and will be upset. And he always told me that you are thinking like that because you're a girl and don't think like that. You're uh, limiting yourself. So um, they've always been so supportive. They always told me that you can do it. And um, it really helped me. To believe myself. Incredible that on the journey of fulfillment or being fulfilled or bring much value into the community or into this world, there are always the good things or the quote unquote bad things or the challenges. But in the end of the day, I truly believe that the challenges are just here for a reason that maybe I don't realize why some challenges are here in this moment, but maybe a few months later or a year later, or maybe even a few years later, I can look back and I will know exactly why I went through what I went through. And most of the time I was so happy because 
the person I have become. And I would like to make a quick comment on. You mentioned that other people are saying things. You are this, 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 because of your gender. Um, I think that's. I think that's ig ignorant because, but also at the same time, I understand because I came from a psychology background. Also, it is something called the human cognition process, which is essentially how we understand certain things works, and how everyone essentially understands is by putting things into different boxes. For example, when you explain a food that other people never have tried it before, you can tell them that. For example, when people ask, "What does gelato taste like?" I tell them, "Oh, it tastes like ice cream," you know. And then they can relate A with B, and B is something they know, right? And when people don't really understand things and they try to make sense of that, they just put the reason into something they believe that is true, right?、Uh, for example, like you mentioned before, that people say things for such as like they'll follow you because of、um, your gender.、Um, I think that is way too old school topic, but、um, definitely here to acknowledge you that you are doing great. And so let's shift the conversation a little bit.、Um, what are your thoughts on CBDC? I think everyone that、uh, believes in Bitcoin and、uh, read、uh, Bitcoin's white paper and joined the cryptocurrency space because of the freedom and because of the. Uh, uh, actually, not being dependent to the government,、uh, won't、um, accept CBDCs as cryptocurrencies、um, because they have really different、um, natures with the thing we know as Bitcoin and crypto.、Uh, although CBDCs work on blockchain, so they are cryptocurrencies, but they really have different、uh, goals, different、uh, nature with、um, the things we have now in crypto market. Um, I can't say that I'm a fan actually because、um, I think they just the same as fiat. They just、uh, have the advantages of electronic payments and、um, kind of safer payments transactions that are transparent, but they are still、um, functioning and doing everything just the same as fiat currencies. They're、um, under the、um, Uh, control of governments and and they have both good sides and also bad sides I guess yes Iran is developing its CBDC and、um, actually it was last week that、um, it was announced that、um, Iran CBDC will work its、um, will actually be launched and start working、um, as soon as possible and、um, I think that will be、um, Good because it、um, helps the governments to understand this concept and、um, actually help the adoption in the world、uh, about the blockchain and cryptocurrencies. But we can't say that it will have a good impact on the、uh, market of other cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, and such things. So、um, yeah, I think、um, they there are kind of、uh, good aspects of this. But it's so far from the idea of Bitcoin and the freedom that other cryptocurrencies give people. I agree, and actually, the last episode we had similar conversation with one of the guests, and we were talking about essentially in this moment, DeFi is. Really booming, but also at the same time, DeFi is making C5 better.、Yeah. And what might happen in the future that there might be a possibility that C5 would buy out or collaborating with so much DeFi projects versus these DeFi people just continuously going down their own path and really see it through what might happens, right? But for me. I think when it comes to DeFi, when it comes to CBDC, we really have to see where the future unfolds. Do you have a comment on stablecoin because it's something so popular and very very interesting these days? Yeah,、uh, actually,、um, I think stablecoins made、um, crypto market much easier. We didn't have stablecoins; trading would be much more difficult, and、um, maintaining the value of, for example, something you want to invest was real hard.、Uh, you、um, 
would be really um, worried about the volatility in crypto market when you want to invest. And uh, I think um, also now uh, with DeFi and DeFi protocols, stablecoin is something that's definitely needed. Uh, but um, the fact that centralized stable coins are um, not really secure, are not really decentralized. For example, we have um, USDT or these kind of centralized um, stable coins, although using them is so, so fast and so easy. And I think all of us do that, but uh, they're not, uh, we can, they're not really decentralized. And the fact that, for example, these kind of systems can freeze the amount of money on a specific address. So it's just against freedom. But um, for me, I uh, prefer to use decentralized stable coins, such as, for example, DAI and different uh, decentralized stable, stable coins that um, actually uh, control their value based on um, supply and demand and not based on uh, backed assets like commercial papers and such, such things because they can cause different po problems and uh, actually they won't be any um, reliable source to understand that everything is going correct in the treasury. And uh, But about the decentralized stable coins, I really support them. I think they're really useful, for example, in lending protocols, different DeFi protocols. So uh, stable coins are really uh, needed, I think. But I prefer the decentralized ones. Absolutely. About three days ago, on Wednesday, Bitcoin was all-time high, was 66.9 thousand. And today, the day of the recording is about 60.4K. Did you buy the dips? And where do you see the BTC, the truly long-term vision is? Maybe, yeah, we don't have to talk about price, but... <laughs> Yeah, actually, it's always uh, hard for me to talk about um, price scenarios and um, predicting the exact numbers. As you know, I'm not a technical analyst, analyst and I uh, just work with fundamentals and on-chain data. Um, about the all-time high, uh, uh, I bought the dip, actually. <laughs> not here, just um, um, I added some BDC on um, 29K, uh, if you remember, uh, a few months ago. Uh, and um, yeah, that's so interesting when you just see it, it goes up and um, actually um, hits new all-time high. It's always so exciting. Uh, but um, as the nature of a financial market, we shouldn't um, expect the market to just be uh, always bullish. It's the nature of the market that has to come down, has to be sometimes bearish. It uh, actually a negative sentiment is um, really, really important to have a really big spike in price always. If you see that um, just um, when a market is uh, really uh, bullish and everything, everyone thinks that it's just uh, going to uh, go to, the, to moon. the moon. Yeah, actually go to the moon. It's just the, the second that the price just come down and um, it's, uh, lots of people tend to uh, actually save their, um, you know, profit booking. They do prof profit booking. So um, we see some sell pressure. But um, on the other hand, when a, a market is, uh, kind of bearish, all people are in fear and um, the, mar the market is um, almost undervalued. We see some good spikes and good increases in the price. So we shouldn't, under we shouldn't expect the market to just go to the moon right away and, uh, and never stop and never come down. It's not right to <laughs> expect, but uh, about the long-term vision and long-term um, scenario, I would definitely say that with the um, status we have now, you know, many things will happen, can happen actually about regulations, about governments, about some, uh, for example, um, different uh, regulations from different countries and governments. We can't predict them. Uh, but with the status we have today, um, Bitcoin will uh, have a really good and bullish uh, trend in the long term. And I'm sure that we uh, someday will just have dreams about the prices we're seeing today and different reasons. Adoption, 
uh, and um, actually the improvement of the market, the community and uh, knowledge in the different co um, countries. And um, on the other hand, we have the um, nature of Bitcoin network that helps it to improve its value. You know, having we have a different um, things in the nature of the network that helps it to improve its uh, value. And yeah, I think that it will be a really good market for investments and we'll see much higher prices in next years. I truly believe that this whole industry is meant for reward people who sees the long-term vision versus like you just mentioned speculation even people think that they have gained something but compared to long-term vision it's absolutely nothing exactly. you're going to follow your heart when you're doing that i think nothing will annoy you in the way and you sometimes when i'm tired and uh, i really can't even stand on my legs i'm really happy i think that okay i've done something today and when you do something you like, you also enjoy all of the difficulties. So.